I was just looking over some uh, some notes for this morning in preparation for the show. 135 people showed up last night at a church in Filer to hear the presentation by Pastor Sharam Hadian. He was speaking about a topic he calls Chrislam, or Chrislam. And that would be this notion that the, the God of the, uh, the Quran is the same as the God of the Bible. He says it isn't. And he has some experience in this, having been raised in an Islamic culture and family, and then converting to Christianity and moving to the United States and has lived in both Canada and the U.S. 135 people showed up on a Monday night at a tiny church in Filer, Idaho. Now, this is just one of, th- uh, well, four total. There are three more events that he has planned over the next couple of days. Two of those are closed events because they're dealing with some of the community leaders and also with some of the the, 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 the clerical leaders, that is, the clergy in the area. Uh, those will be taking place over the next couple of afternoons. There is one more event tonight that's open to the public, and that is at Eastside Baptist Church, and that's on Eastland Drive North in Twin Falls, if you had 135 people turn out last night in Filer, now it's not far away, we agree with that, but it, it's a Monday night, 135 people, that should tell us. So by the time that he actually leaves this area after he finishes his presentation tomorrow afternoon, he may have reached, who knows, 1,000 people face-to-face. He certainly could uh, with numbers like that. What does that tell us? About, uh, about this situation in this community. And what should people in the establishment media, what should they glean from a crowd like this? What should people in the political class glean from a turnout like this? How about the trustees at the College of Southern Idaho who run the Islamic resettlement program in this community? All of these things need to be taken into consideration, and the trustees who work in elected positions 135 people turned out in Filer alone last night to hear the presentation. 135. More presentations still to come. Is there a message in that, in that number? Numbers tell a story. Numbers tell a really big story. I was sharing this with some friends over the weekend. In 2009, I attended the first major Tea Party rally at the Capitol in Washington. Uh, That was, what, September of 2009. And I was there with a number of friends. Uh, We we had a caravan, and then we boarded trains when we got close to the city. And when we got there, they actually had us step off a good two hours early to march down Pennsylvania Avenue from the Federal Triangle to the Capitol building because they were so overwhelmed with the people who were coming off the trains. They were worried about safety issues because so many people were gathered in this small area. It took three hours for that crowd from start to finish, to march down Pennsylvania Avenue to the Capitol. Now, the media poo-pooed the size of the crowd, and they no longer give actual estimates. That is, they don't come out and say this, uh, that, that, this that the Capitol Police and the Park Service avoid that, because after the 80,000-man march, which Louis Farrakhan billed as the Million Man March 20 years ago, they only had uh, 80,000 show up, and he, he sued the government when it claimed that they only had 80,000 people. But I happened to be at that rally in 2009, and I was standing next to a friend of mine. He's retired from the U.S. military, and he used to be the Air Force liaison to Congress. So he's familiar with the Washington scene, and we were having a discussion with some of the the police officers who were there in our midst, and they were telling us, now this was unofficial because they couldn't announce it, at noon they had 1.2 million people, at 1 o'clock they had 1.5 million. Now, about a week after this event took place, I had the, uh, the good fortune of speaking to Cal Thomas uh, via Facebook. We were messaging back and forth. Uh, and I, I barely know him, but I know him through some mutual friends. And, uh, he, and, and luckily, he always seems to remember me when I touch base with him. And he was saying it was one of the largest crowds he has ever seen in Washington. And he's a, he's a native of that city. He's been there 70 years. The other part of this story, and he was telling me at the time, there were men who work on Capitol Hill that is, members of Congress, who were poo-pooing this movement as well. But when they saw the crowds, they were terrified. And they immediately realized that they could no longer be hoodwinking the American people. So yes, large crowds are the story. If you can turn out 
135 people on a Monday night in Filer, Idaho, when they may have so many other things that they need to do, then I think we're talking about something here that is growing in this community and that you can't ignore. It's 8-11. Some of the other things we're going to be talking about this morning, I believe Grant Loeb's will be joining us in studio between 9 and 10 o'clock today. He's our chief prosecutor here in Twin Falls County. And we may be talking some legal issues with him, and he'll be able to take some of your telephone calls as well. Steve Millington expected just after the break at 8.30. Steve Millington is the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. There is a column today by Ben Dominic at The Federalist, which is his publication, where he is asking, what does the Republican Party any longer represent if it, resent, uh, if it stands for anything? And I'd like to address that to Steve while he's in the studio with us. There is another video out from Planned Parenthood, well, not from Planned Parenthood, but about Planned Parenthood that was released today, just as or more damning than the others that we've seen over the last couple of weeks. We may not get to that topic today, but we'll try at some point this week to follow up with that. But in the meantime, as we're talking about this situation, with the, with the, the concern of people in the Magic Valley, and really throughout the United States, about who is coming here, and, and, and the people who are coming here in these refugee programs, all right, I buy into the notion that some of them just are looking to, to open up a local you know, hot dog stand. Well, they'd sell beef franks. They wouldn't sell pork ones. And, and, and make a living and, you know, and live the American dream. But I'm also well aware of what could else, who else could be in those droves of people who are coming to the United States. The Daily Signal, which is published by the Heritage Foundation, has put together a piece today, and this is the sound from a video. This sound should give you an indication, and, and they've tracked all of the terror attacks in this country going back 15 years. There was a brief spike in 2011. We have already, surpa- we're talking Islamic terror. We have already surpassed that. We are not even to month eight on the calendar. Month eight is still coming up next week. We have already surpassed that. I want you to take a listen to this for a short while. At least you can glean something from it, and it should be very telling about what we could expect. The terror plot involving a Green Township man unfolds as he is thwarted this afternoon by the FBI. Chicago FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force arrested two U.S. citizens Wednesday night on suspicion of conspiring to support ISIS. The FBI arrested him this morning as he was attempting to carry out a suicide car bombing. Uh, attempting to kill U.S. military uh, personnel at Fort Riley in Kansas. Two women are under arrest in Brooklyn. They're charged with planning to build a bomb. Prosecutors say the suspect trained with Islamic militants in Syria and was then told to return to the U.S. and commit acts of terrorism. He wanted to go to a military base in Texas and kill three or four soldiers execution style. There has been a shooting at a free speech event featuring cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. The feds accused 20-year-old college student Munther Omar Saleh of preparing an explosive device to detonate in the New York metropolitan area. The thwarted homegrown terror attack on police officers in Boston is having a ripple effect nationwide as police departments grapple with fears over the far reach of ISIS. And you know, we only have five more months to go this calendar year. Who knows what other surprises may be lurking out there. It's 53. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story, News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Coming up on 816. And if you'd like to reach the program today, perhaps you were in attendance last night at the event. Maybe you can fill us in about the reaction from the people who happened to be there. Understand there was a great deal of media attention as well. The telephone number here at the studio, 736 0300. Once more, you can reach us, 736 0300. Also, I'm available by email. That's bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com, bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. Last name is spelled C-O-L-L-E-Y. This comes from Raymond Ibrahim. He is writing uh, for, a, for a blog that I get in my email. It's called the Middle East Watch. And you may know, detect by his name, you might detect an Arab background. But again, you have a great many of these people who have They've walked away from the faith of their fathers, and they've turned to Christianity. And he is writing, During the height of one of the most brutal months of Muslim persecution of Christians, the U.S. State Department exposed its double standards against persecuted Christian minorities. Because you realize, we're not importing people from Syria who have a Christian background. No, we're importing people here who have a Muslim background. The writer says, Sister Diana Momeka, an influential Iraqi Christian leader, who was scheduled to visit the U.S. to advocate for persecuted Christians in the Mideast, 
was denied a visa by the U.S. State Department, even though she had visited the U.S. before, most recently in 2012. After this refusal became public, many Americans protested. The State Department finally relented and issued her a visa. Meanwhile, they were actually bringing in a great many Muslims from that part of the world to offer testimony and talk about how serious the situation is. But a nun from Iraq could not come to this country, according to the State Department. Somehow she is dangerous because she's a Christian and she cares for people. And no, 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 we can't have that here as we try to change the composition of this country. I've got to tell you, we used to just say it was incompetence in Washington. You know, you have a bureaucratic system that is completely out of control, out of hand, and because of that, it's just terribly disorganized. But I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not incompetence. It is intentional. And it is telling us something very sinister is going on within our government. It's happening in Washington. And it's, 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 it's percolating down through to the local levels in many cases. Because a lot of people at the local level would like to be at the top level, or they'd like to please the people at the top level, or because Washington is sending them satchels full of cash and saying, look, we know these people could end up being dangerous at some point, but good golly, look at all this money. Think about all the tuition and the books that you'll sell, and think about all of the rentals you'll fill. Uh, here's some more money. Yeah, all right. And we've got people coming, and they'll get food stamps, and they'll spend that money in your store. And think of the cheap labor. So you have a lot of people on the local level who are buying into this, even though deep down in, in, in the, the pits of their own stomachs, they know that this is potentially going to be destructive of this community. And again, they can call us all sorts of names. But the fact of the matter is, I have no intention of becoming one of those people the morning that the smoke is still billowing saying, we told you so. Why do we need to get to that point before someone finally opens their eyes, looks around, and then stands up and says, no? Because that's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to come down to. People are going to have to say, we're going to take a stand and we're not going to permit this to happen any longer. And we have to do it in large numbers. We have to show them. Again, there's a presentation tonight. Eastside Baptist. That's on Eastland Drive North in Twin Falls. 7 o'clock. Pastor Sharam Hadian going to be speaking there tonight. We need a large turnout. You need to hear what he has to say. And you have to show the people who believe they're the powers that be. You have to show them that we're not taking it any longer. 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. 53. I want to thank you for joining us this morning. I did mention Grant Loeb's as expected in the next hour of the program. Have some, uh, some stuff to talk with him about uh, crime numbers and the like, and maybe some cases around the country uh, raising some eyebrows. Details on that. Also in about 10 minutes, Steve Millington, he's the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party, will be talking about the future of the gone old party known as the GOP. All of that coming up. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story. I wanted to mention that tomorrow morning between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, Dr. Jonathan Tripp is scheduled to join us in the studio. And uh, the, we've had a couple of really interesting shows with him. Uh, we've been talking about everything from uh, dental care. We've talked about allergies. We've talked about weight loss. And he always invites your telephone calls as well. And he, he offers some what I would call uh, some very clear-headed and free advice on the radio. And, uh, and he can point you in the right direction, even if he doesn't have a direct answer for you. And that's Tripp Family Medicine. They're located on Fillmore Street in Twin Falls, across from the, the main post office. And, and we should point out, in a family practice, our subject last week, in a family practice, you get care that you may not get in, in one of the larger institutions, uh, the, these corporate-style medical practices, where you're really just a number. And as they like to say, life's too short not to feel good. The whole object of, of this is to get your mind and your body in a positive mode. So we'll be joined by Dr. Tripp, and perhaps he'll bring along a guest as well tomorrow. Uh, save those telephone calls if you have a question or comment for the doctor, because, hey, where else do you get an opportunity to, uh, to have an opportunity to talk for a few minutes with a doctor on any big subject like that? doesn't happen all that often. 825, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Again, I was mentioning earlier, meeting tonight, uh, Pastor Sharam Hadi and is going to be speaking at the Eastside Baptist Church, 7 o'clock, 
here in Twin Falls. Where is that? Uh, I've got it as Eastland Drive North. I've passed by it a few times as well. It's a large church. It's larger than the one in Filer last night that hosted an event that brought out 135 people. And yes, we are told some of them were people who hold elective office in uh, in Twin Falls County. And so they're, they're there because they want to at least learn. And th- that doesn't hurt you at all. You know, hearing something like this, some people out there would just close their ears and their eyes, you know, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Uh, they don't want to bother with that because... Uh, and, and that I often see happen on the left. But this is an opportunity. Even if you may not agree with him, you should hear him because he has uh, he has an experience in his lifetime that most of us will never have. We have a caller with us at 826. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Good morning, Bill. I was there last night, and you know I thought I knew a little bit about what Islam was all about, but it was a real eye-opener. And, and the, the fact is that part of their doctrine is they – lie and lie and lie they'll be friend people like he pointed out in nigeria with a couple they play soccer together but as soon as they got the upper hand or got a majority then you either convert or in this case they run the people out of town and they burn their house so you know this is the the whole deal their whole theology is one of deception Allah, he's pointed out is the worship of a moon god uh, you know, a, a pagan idol, and, uh, and it, there's no way that you can uh, put Christianity, belief in Jesus Christ as our Savior, and Allah on the same page. They, they're totally incompatible. I think that's the point he really pointed out time and time again. They don't really believe in any salvation. They don't believe in Jesus dying on the cross, although they try to now com- combined, you know, Islam with Christianity and call it Chrislam, and that's what his topic was about. Well, it, it, I, was, it, the I thing, was really impressed. The thing is, it, it, you know, if you're a Christian, and it, so you know I am the way, the truth, and the life, you look at that, it, it, he, he never qualified that by saying, and then after me comes Muhammad. You know, that, that, that that's not in there. Well, it, absolutely, and and so Christians out there— as he pointed out, the it's a theology. It's more of a about fifteen percent religion is Islam, and the other eighty five percent is political militancy. And so that's the thing we have to realize. So I know I've got a lot of Christian friends are saying, "Well, it's just another religion. We need to treat them as equals with our religions." But that's not what they are. It's a political theology, and the religion is kind of a facade to mask what their really true uh, leanings are and their objectives is to dominate the world and has been from day one. I thank you much for the call, and, and, and I thank you for attending last night and filling us in a little bit about about what took place. Again, uh, that domination of the world, that part of it is, is simple. We learned that in school when I was a kid. We had to learn various dates and events, 632 and the Islamic conquest and what they were up to, what they were trying to do at the time. Sure enough, that hasn't gone away. Their power waned for a while, but they'll be back. That's what we have to be concerned about. And and for all the people out there who say all religions are true, well, then if that's the case, then no religions are true. This is not. I go out and I buy coffee every once in a while, and my brand is generally Maxwell House. But if Folgers is on sale, I'll buy it. Or if Chock Full of Nuts is on sale, I'll buy it. But that's coffee. That's not how I relate to the creator of the universe. So I may think that all coffees are equal, but this is this is a vastly different thing when we're talking about religious faith. And this notion that somehow, you know, the, the, Lon Solomon, who's got a great, great radio program, pastor of a large church in Virginia, I used to listen to his show every Sunday morning. He was to- telling a fellow one time about his church. Guy approached him at a workout club, and the guy suddenly got angry with him and said, well, that's exclusionary. Well, yeah. <laughs> what do you expect? You know, I'm going to tell you on one Sunday that, you know, Jesus is the way, and then you're going to come back the next Sunday, and I'm going to tell you Buddha's the way, and then the following Sunday that criminy. You know, there's a reason that we think liberals are dumber than boxes of rocks. Hey, Steve Millington joining us in just a few minutes. It's 830. It's 54.